The story of hominin evolution has long been tied to the African continent, where the bulk of fossil evidence has been discovered and where many anthropologists believe our earliest ancestors first walked upright. However, an alternative hypothesis suggests that the origins of bipedalism and even the split between humans and great apes might trace back to the Balkan Peninsula. This view is supported by new fossil discoveries, geological insights, and anatomical comparisons that challenge the traditional out-of-Africa framework. Furthermore, the very notion of Africa as being sharply divided from Eurasia is increasingly scrutinized, given the lack of significant natural barriers to migration between the two regions. Also in question is whether we evolved from knuckle-walking apes, or if our ancestors were always bipedal. The Balkan Peninsula, encompassing Albania, Bulgaria, Greece, Montenegro, Serbia and Croatia, among other countries, holds a critical place in the debate about early hominin evolution. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for a Balkan origin is the discovery of Graecopithecus, a hominin species dating to around 7.2 million years ago. Fossils of Graecopithecus were uncovered in Greece and Bulgaria, and detailed studies of its dental morphology suggest that it is closely related to later hominins. Notably, its teeth exhibit thick enamel and rooted molars, adaptations seen in early hominins rather than modern apes. This places Graecopithecus as a potential common ancestor of both humans and African apes, challenging the assumption that such species necessarily originated in Africa. Adding to this the famous Trachylos footprints discovered on the island of Crete which would have been part of the greater Balkan Peninsula when the Mediterranean Sea dried up, further complicate the narrative. These fossilized tracks, dating to approximately six million years ago, exhibit features consistent with bipedal locomotion, such as a forward-facing big toe aligned with the other toes. The age of these footprints predates the earliest definitive African evidence of bipedalism, such as Australopithecus afarensis, by nearly two million years. While their attribution to a specific species remains uncertain, they reinforce the possibility that bipedal locomotion originated in the snowy Balkan Peninsula rather than the savannas of Africa. This image of a prehistoric hominin, similar in appearance to Graecopithecus, shown with snow-covered fur and a cold, wintry forest setting. The scene highlights the resilience and adaptation of this Ice Age ancestor, in harsh conditions of the prehistoric Balkans. The existence of Grecopithecus and the Trachylus footprints also align with broader evolutionary patterns. The late Miocene epoch, during which Grecopithecus lived, was a time of significant environmental change. The Mediterranean region experienced fluctuations in climate and vegetation, creating a mosaic of forests and open habitats. These environments would have provided selective pressures favoring upright walking as a way to navigate both arboreal and terrestrial terrains efficiently. The broader dispersal of great apes and early hominins across Africa and Eurasia also supports a Eurasian origin for their shared lineage. Extinct apes such as Dryopithecus and Uranopithecus, also found in the Balkan Peninsula, show traits consistent with arboreal locomotion but lack the specialized features of modern African apes. These genera represent a potential ancestral stock from which both humans and great apes could have diverged. The presence of Dryopithecus fossils in the Balkan Peninsula aligns with the idea that this region served as a cradle for early ape evolution before some lineages migrated into Africa and others spread further into Asia. The notion of a stark division between Africa and Eurasia as separate evolutionary theatres is increasingly untenable. The physical barrier between the two continents is limited to the narrow and shallow Suez Isthmus, which has been traversed repeatedly by fauna throughout geological history. The idea that early hominins or apes would have been confined to one side of this artificial boundary ignores the fluidity of migration driven by environmental change. During periods of extremely low sea levels, such as occurred six million years ago, land bridges formed, allowing for easy exchanges of species. The interconnected nature of these regions suggests that evolutionary innovations such as bipedalism could have originated in one area and subsequently spread or independently evolved in others. Indeed, the artificial distinction between Africa and Eurasia has more to do with modern geopolitical constructs 
than with evolutionary realities. The two regions form a single contiguous landmass with shared ecological zones and migration corridors known as Afro-Eurasia. As a matter of fact, six million years ago, there could have been the equivalent of an easily traversed broad plain or basin between what are now the continents of Eurasia and Africa. A new paper demonstrates the migration of bipedal hominins from the Balkan Peninsula to Africa. The timing coincides with the Messinian salinity crisis, a 600,000-year period when the Mediterranean Sea nearly dried up, creating land bridges that facilitated faunal exchanges between Africa and Eurasia. Remarkably, this left behind a salt crust up to 100 metres thick when the land under the Strait of Gibraltar rose up, blocking the sea from the Atlantic. And then, in a massive flood, the strait suddenly opened up again in a period estimated to have been only two years, and the basin was flooded once again. Intriguingly, this latest discovery is consistent with the desert swing theory, which holds that dry conditions in Mesopotamia and the Sahara triggered a mass migration of mammals from Eurasia to Africa a few hundred thousand years before these most ancient footprints six million years ago. In fact, all of these studies of intercontinental migration show that it is not a one-way street. So, even if we accept that these are hominin footprints, there is no evidence that hominins must have originated in the Balkan Peninsula and then moved to Africa. The researchers believe hominins could have originated in Africa and then moved to the Balkan Peninsula. This suggests that migration was not unidirectional from Africa to Eurasia, but was instead a dynamic, two-way process, according to a study on the footprints. After their first paper on the footprints was published, the authors described what came next as six and a half years of sort of a living hell. Their paper was published in the Proceedings of the Geologist Association, which is an unusual publication venue for a paper on hominin evolution. In an interview, the study author was asked if there had been any additional feedback, or blowback, since the article's publication, and if this discovery had been deliberately ignored and shunted aside because it might be politically incorrect or contradict the African theory of human origin. Indeed, the mainstream paleoanthropological community has largely ignored the story because it contradicts the dominant narrative. Critically, this framework not only supports a Balkan origin for hominin, but also reinterprets the evolutionary history of other great apes. The traditional model often assumes that knuckle-walking apes like chimpanzees and gorillas retained the ancestral condition while humans evolved bipedalism later. The novel hypothesis that chimpanzees and gorillas descend from a bipedal ancestor and that knuckle-walking is a derived trait challenges the traditional view that knuckle-walking represents the ancestral condition for the common ancestor of African apes and humans. In a gut punch to traditional narratives, new research suggests that the last common ancestor of humans and African apes was bipedal, and that knuckle-walking evolved independently in chimpanzees and gorillas as an adaptation to specific environments. Anatomical studies of wrist and hand morphology reveal that humans lack the specialized features necessary for knuckle-walking, such as reinforced carpals, suggesting that bipedalism predates these derived traits. In a recent podcast from the British Natural History Museum, world-renowned anatomy expert Ashley Hammond stated that, quote, We are still unsure what kind of an ape that hominins evolved from, but there are fossil apes from Europe that are more generalized and less derived looking than a chimpanzee or gorilla. We are still a little unsure about exactly what kind of an ape hominins evolved from. So that's a big question mark. But there are fossil apes from the later Miocene um, in Europe, especially. And the, the fossil apes from Europe are a little bit more, what I'm going to call it generalized. They're not quite as derived looking as a chimpanzee or a gorilla. Uh, they look a little more primitive. And their whole body plan would probably have been a little more flexible and easy, it would have been easier for them to stand up and posture bipedally than it would have been, than it is for a chimpanzee. Chimpanzees have a really stiff um, lower back, a really long pelvis, 
They have all these features that are really advantageous for climbing, but it makes them not very good bipeds. And a lot of the apes that were alive, at least outside of Africa during the later Miocene, were a little more flexible. So it's very possible that we evolved from something that was a little more generalized like that. Furthermore, studies of knuckle walking mechanics in chimpanzees and gorillas show differences in how they perform this behavior. Gorillas use a more stable, weight-bearing posture, while chimpanzees use a more flexible and variable posture. These differences suggest independent evolution of knuckle walking in the two lineages rather than inheritance from a common ancestor. The wrist bones of African apes, chimpanzees and gorillas, show specialized adaptations for knuckle walking, such as reinforced carpals that restrict movement and provide stability during locomotion. Humans lack these adaptations, which suggests that knuckle walking traits evolved after the divergence of the human lineage. These adaptations are absent in Australopithecus and other early hominins, further supporting the idea that the common ancestor of humans and African apes was not a knuckle walker. The evidence for bipedalism among the earliest apes is not confined to fossils from the Balkan Peninsula, but extends to the behavioral and ecological diversity of modern apes. For example, orangutans in Southeast Asia, though primarily arboreal, frequently engage in bipedal walking both in trees and on the ground. Moreover, studies of ape infants suggest that knuckle walking is learned behavior, not an innate trait. This learning process implies that it may have evolved as a specific adaptation in certain lineages, rather than being inherited from a common ancestor. The hominin Sahelanthropus tuchadensis, which lived seven million years ago in West Central Africa, shows a foramen magnum, the hole in the skull where the spinal cord connects, positioned more anteriorly, consistent with bipedal locomotion. If Sahelanthropus is close to the last common ancestor of humans and African apes, this would suggest bipedalism predates the split between humans and apes. Their postural flexibility suggests that upright locomotion has deep evolutionary roots and was not a unique innovation of the human lineage. What's more, the geographic distribution of orangutans in Asia, combined with the presence of early ape fossils, including Sivopithecus and Gigantopithecus, underscores the role of Eurasia as a crucial region for ape evolution. Chimpanzees and bonobos also show intriguing signs of having evolved from a bipedal ancestor. Infant chimpanzees, for example, display bipedal tendencies during their earliest stages of locomotion before transitioning to knuckle walking. This developmental evidence hints that bipedalism might be an ancestral trait retained during early growth, but later overridden by adaptations to terrestrial quadrupedalism. Indeed, the ecological pressures faced by ancestors of chimpanzees and bonobos in African forests may have favoured the evolution of knuckle-walking as a more efficient means of traversing the dense understory, while early humans retained and refined bipedalism in open savannas and mixed environments. Thus, the evidence suggests that knuckle-walking in chimpanzees and gorillas is a derived trait, evolved independently after the split from a bipedal or semi-bipedal common ancestor. Fossil, biomechanical, and anatomical studies support the idea that the last common ancestor of humans and African apes was more likely to have been a bipedal or arboreal climber, challenging the traditional view of knuckle-walking as ancestral. In light of this perspective, the evolution of early humans and the great apes must be seen as part of a larger, interconnected narrative. Humans, with their refined bipedalism, likely evolved from an ancestor that already exhibited upright locomotion. Meanwhile, the adaptations for knuckle-walking seen in chimpanzees and gorillas are best understood as specialized traits that emerged in response to forested environments rather than as ancestral features. The distribution of apes across Africa and Eurasia, along with the fossil evidence from the Balkan Peninsula, highlights the importance of this region as a critical zone for the evolution of both humans and great apes. Therefore, the discoveries of Grecopithecus and the Trachylosaur footprints are not anomalies, but rather pieces of a larger puzzle that situates the Balkan Peninsula at the heart of early hominin evolution. They challenge the dominant out-of-Africa paradigm, 
not by dismissing Africa's role, but by emphasizing the complexity of migration and adaptation in a dynamic, interconnected world. As more fossils are unearthed and new technologies refine our understanding of ancient lineages, the significance of the Balkan Peninsula in human evolution will undoubtedly become clearer. This perspective not only broadens our understanding of where we come from, but also underscores the shared evolutionary heritage of all great apes, rooted in the landscapes of a unified Afro-Eurasian world. While the mainstream scientific consensus holds that early bipedalism originated in Africa, a growing body of research suggests that the Balkan Peninsula might have played a critical role in early hominin evolution. Thanks for watching and commenting. We like to hear what you think.